What is up you guys? So in this one, we'll be talking about future promises and the async method. So let me clean up what I had from the previous lecture on condition variables. Um, I won't need the queue and I won't need the condition variable libraries. So let's say I've got a function that computes the factorial as such. So let's say I've got a function that computes the factorial takes in the integer defines a counter equal to one. And, and, you know, as usual, we perform a for loop. We perform a loop counting backwards in each iteration. I'll multiply by I. Okay. Last but not least, I'll print the result as follows. So factorial is equal to the result K and I'll go to a next line right down in the main. I'll attach the thread T one to the factorial function. Pass it for, then I'll join the thread. So all in all, we've got this function factorial, which computes the factorial of N. And in the main function, I create a thread T one to compute the factorial of four. So thread one will compute the factorial of four and print the result to standard out. So this program runs perfectly. Let's see, make it, then run it. The factorial of four is 24. But now I, you know, I'm not satisfied. I don't just want to print the result to the standard out. I want to return the result from the child, from the child thread to the parent thread so that I can do something with it. So based on what we learned so far, this is easily achievable. So let's say I create an integer X, then I pass X into the thread T1 by reference. And of course the factorial will take the second parameter, a reference to an integer X and store the result in X. Now X is a shared variable between the child thread and the parent thread. So we need to protect it with some kind of mutex. So we define a global mutex as such. M. So the child thread will set the variable X first and then the parent thread goes ahead and fetches the variable. So we may also need a condition variable for that. So first include condition variable library and define a condition variable con. So now the code, our code becomes more complicated. I need to call condition notify and condition wait. And even more importantly, we have even, we even have two global variables to be taken care of. So the structure of the code becomes messy. In this situation, you ask yourself the following question. Does my code have to be that complicated? Could I do what has to be done with less variables or less lines of code? All I need to do is launch a thread and get the result from the thread. And that's it. The standard library actually provides an easier way to do this job. Instead of using thread object to create a thread over here, we'll use an async function. So we'll call the async. As you can see, it has no member async. STD has no member async. So as you can see, it's not defined. The way to include it in your program is to include the future library. As such, you see that it's defined. So you pass it factorial and for as we did in the thread. So the thread is a class. However, async is a function. So this function returns a very important thing. The way we can return it is using the future int few equal to async such. Let me go ahead and remove this and remove this. This future is thus a channel where I can get the result from the child thread, I can do the following. X is equal to few dot get. And hence the factorial function does not need a second parameter, but it does need a return value. And, and at the end, I need to return K. And we don't need the global variables, which are really pretty messy. Let's remove this and this. The code becomes much cleaner. The few dot get function waits until the child thread finishes and then and then returns the, re the value k the result of the child thread over here so conceptually a future class represents an object where you can get something in the future and a future object can call the get function only once if later on 
I call if you get again, it will crash my program, okay? I don't know why this is yelling at me. <laughs> it's an editor problem over here. Let me just go ahead and try again and write return zero. So yeah, all is good. Now, we've mentioned that async function is used to create another thread. But this is not completely true. The async function may or may not create another thread. And this is controlled by another parameter. Let's say I call the async method with the parameter standard launch deferred. Now the async function will not create a thread. Actually, it will defer the execution of this function till later on when the get function is called. Okay. So when get is called, the factorial function will be executed in the same thread. On top of that, even more, if I launch the async function with the launch async, it will create another thread. Also, I can call two values together as such, std launch deferred. So this means that whether the async function will create another thread or not, it will be determined by the implementation. And this is actually the default value of this parameter. So this and this are equivalent. Okay, so they're exactly the same. If you want to make sure that a new thread will be born, then we should use async. So what we've done so far is use future to pass a value from the child thread to the parent thread. You can also go ahead, take a step further and use the future to do the opposite thing. You can pass the value from the parent thread to the child thread, not at the time of creating the thread, but sometime in the future. For that, we also need a promise. So std promise in p, and we need another future f equal to p dot get future. And we'll pass the future as reference to the thread. Oops as such. Hence, this factorial will take future argument as such as a parameter. And here we can call the future to get the value f dot get. So by doing that, I'm telling my child thread that I will send him a value, but I don't have that value yet. It's not in my hand, but I know it's coming anytime in the future, in the near future, it will come. So be prepared and I'm going to send it using this future variable. And I promise I'll do that, okay? And one thing over here, I'll pass it as reference. So at the moment, you just do whatever you want to do, and then wait for my package. I promise that in the future, I'll send you F, okay? Let's say sometime later, I'll do something else. And maybe I'll take I might just nap. So let's say I'll put this thread to sleep for, I don't know, say 10 milliseconds. Okay. And maybe I'll just set my, I'll just set the value of the promise to four, something like that. So after I set the value to four, child thread will get the value four. Let's print something over here that verifies the program is good. And X at this moment is X. Let's make it. Oops there's an error. So the error here is that I've got the four right here. That's wrong. Go ahead and make it. So let's make it. There you go. And run it. So the result is 24. And x from the child over here is also 24. That is printed out by the parent. So our program is good. Note that both the promise and the future are our template classes with a type integer because the value we're transmitting over is an integer. And this future is also a template class of an integer because the value we are getting back is also an integer. Now, suppose I don't need to get anything back from the child. And after I took a nap, I totally forgot that I have promised to send my child thread a value. So I have broken my promise. <laughs> What's going to happen is f.get function will get an exception with the error code of future error code broken promise. So a promise is a promise. We can't go back. It's a pinky promise. If I promise to send over a value, I have to send it over. And if I really, really cannot send a value, and I know I cannot send a value, then I could set an exception. Over here, p.set exception, std make exception pointer with a runtime error. Error is human. So I didn't set it over here. So now when the child thread is called the get function, it will get this 
exception of runtime error. Instead of sending over an exception of the infamous broken promise, I can come up with a fancy excuse for breaking my promise. Keep in mind that neither promise nor future could be copied. It could only be moved. It's like the thread and a unique lock. So if I create a you know, standard promise integer e2 is p, this will not compile. I should do standard move p. Same thing for the future. So as you can see, I have an error over here. std has no member make exception t. I think it's ptr. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Let me make it and run it. There you go. There's the exception. Okay. Let's talk about something else. So there you go. Let's run this. As you can see, it runs successfully. Okay, let's clean this space over here and talk about something else. Now suppose that this factorial function needs to be computed multiple times. Instead of just, you know, launching one thread to do the computation, I'm going to launch many threads. The way I can do this is, you know, copy this many times. This is two, this is three. Say I've got a hundred threads right here as well. I'm going to copy and paste it or do a for loop. My computer doesn't block, but let, let's say for the moment we've got those multiple threads running. For simplicity, let's consider those three threads. And I cannot pass the same future to all the threads over here because each future can call the get function only once. If I have 10 threads, if I have 100 threads, we'll call the get function 100 times, which is not a good idea. And what can I do to to bypass this issue. Okay, what I can do is at 10, 100, or as many promises as I want, then create 100 futures. So each thread would get its own future attached to it. This is clumsy. We have an easier solution. Standard library provides a better solution, which is to use shared future. So by the name, shared future, type int, could be created by calling share function. Unlike a regular future, the shared future could copy it along futures. So we can just pass it by value as such, which is very handy. And the factorial function thus has to take a shared future. It shouldn't be as a ref. Now, when the parent thread sets the value to 4, all the child threads get the same value. They call the get function. So the shared future is very convenient you have a broadcast communication model. So that's it for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. We talked about a lot of stuff over here. We talked about promises, futures, shared futures, the way we could pass it appropriately to a function, and the way we can use it with one or multiple futures. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it beneficial, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If any questions whatsoever, please leave a comment down in the comment section below and I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible. Thank you so much and I'll see you then.